Hi guys, Tirun Alpan here, founder of Master of the Markets, Elite Trades Conference and the Traders Open Day. So today, we're going to be looking at how do you actually account for spreads. Quite a common topic actually. And um, some traders, you know, actually think that, yeah, it's kind of simple really, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, I know what it's all about. But I think there are some few things that you do need to look into, especially if you're an intraday trader and especially of an intraday trader, you're a scalp trader as well. Then the spreads start to really do matter. But of course, if you're an end of day swing trader or position traders where you are then trading for maybe days or even weeks or even sometimes months as well, then really it doesn't really matter. But regardless, it is really well worth knowing uh, what it is because Sometimes the usual common challenges that some traders have, especially intraday traders, is that sometimes they say, you know what, the price actually reached uh, the, my target level on the chart, but I was not exited, okay? And it started to reverse and I hit my stop loss and all that. And they have lots of arguments with the broker. They really feel down about it. And that sometimes is due to this, okay, spreads. Now let's go through this, all right? Now, first of all, what you first need to understand before we look into the question in detail is, Let's ask ourselves, what is a spread, okay? So what is, what is a spread, right? Now a spread, as you know, is just between the difference in price between the buy and the sell price. Now let me just give you an example, just take our mind just out from the market. So let's say, for example, you go into a shop, the shopkeeper has bought this iPhone for, let's say, 400 pounds, and then now he's selling it to you for 450 pounds, okay? So there's a difference, of course, he's marked it up, right? To make a profit, no? So about 50 pounds markup, isn't it? So he has bought something for 400, now he's selling to you for 450 pounds. So that markup, that difference, that difference in price, that difference in price is what we call as the spread. The same thing in currency. Now, just exchange the um, the product, the iPhone, to currency. So let's say if you're buying the sterling and, and then selling the dollar, that's all there is. I mean, that's how we are getting the spread of that buy and sell, bid and offer price, and the difference of that is the spread, and that's how the broker makes his money because he's putting his markup, and that's where his profit margin is. And of course, as you know, there's not really that many pips difference. Usually in major currency pairs, there's only about one to two pips. And the way that the broker really makes most of the money is the volume, okay? So they need lots of traders trading it um, through their platforms and through their brokerage, and that's how they make most of the money. So now that we understand what the really uh, spread is, in, in essence, just the difference between the buy and the sell price, now we move on to the second part, which is mainly the application part, okay? And what I'm gonna be looking at here is to what orders do we need to apply the spread to? So let's take a look. Now, there's only two types of orders that you can put in the market, buy orders and sell orders. Now here is where you need to pay attention traders because over all these thousands of traders that we have coached, I mean, some people don't really get this fundamental um, understanding between this. Now I'm gonna to explain to you. Now between the buy orders, you can either have an entry order, right? You can either have an order to enter the market or you can have an order to get out of the market in terms of a stop loss, okay? So you can also have it as a stop loss. Likewise, in the sell order as well. In the sell order, you can have it to enter the market and also as a stop loss, okay? So you can have it in either way. Now, the thing what I want to um, pinpoint to you is that usually if you're entering as a pending order, then that would usually be as a buy stop. I think in one of our other videos, we explained about stops and limits. And then as a, as a, as a stop loss, it can also be a buy stop as well. And that usually would be for a short order, okay? Now, for a sell order, it usually is a sell stop, okay? And the same sell stop can be a stop loss for a buy order. So let me just explain this right now, right? So if you actually look at this over here, this buy stop can be an entry to buy, and the same buy stop can be a stop loss to sell, right? You all do remember that because when you put an order to sell live or a pending order, then you immediately put a stop loss as a buy stop, isn't it? So that can also be a 
sell um, stop loss. Now the same order in which you enter into a trade can be used as a stop loss for a buy order. Okay, because do remember the only way to exit any position if you're bought first is to sell it back. And if you're sold first, then is to buy it back on a short order. Okay, that's the only two ways you can exit. Now where, the question here is, where do we add the spread to? Now of course, we only add the spreads to the buy orders. That means either if you're entering it to buy something or on your stop loss for a sell order. Okay, so either on the entry as a buy order or as a stop loss for the sell order is where you would add the spread to. In summary, it's all to the buy orders. So the buy orders is where we add the spread to and that can be either as an entry or as a stop loss, okay? That's the critical thing. The sell orders, no. Now, the next thing I want to tell you is therefore, if you have a target. Now, the last thing I want to tell you is that the price that you look on the chart, okay, now I'm going to come back to and relate that back to target right now. Why is it that some traders, you know, they put a target, the price gets there, but it's still not out of the market yet. Now, this is why. So let's say, for example, you're taking a short trade and you are looking uh, to basically, um, in a, in a, so, so basically your sell stop, so you've got to buy it back, right? So you've got to buy it back. So you basically got a buy limit order at the moment, right? A buy limit order at the moment as a target. But of course, to every buy orders, you need to um, put some spread on it. Now, let me explain because the price that you see on the screen, okay? Now, this is critical. The price that you see on the screen is actually all sell orders, okay? It's all sell orders. So therefore, if it's showing you 13500, showing you 13500, actually the buy price is 13502. So therefore, you can easily understand that if your target was at 13400, it needs to get to 13398 for you to be exited out of the market, okay? Because everything that you see over here is a sell price. So when it reaches 13400 on the chart, it's actually 13402 actually on the buy price. That's why even when it hits it on the chart, you're not able to get out, you're locked in still, okay? So only when it gets to 13398, then only you can get out. So this is very, very critical because within these few pips, sometimes as you know, traders, you know, you might get onto the chart and then that's quickly just reverses and retraces back. And then sometimes your stops are hit and then all the profit that you saw is unrealized and just disappears, you see? So this is not what you want really. Right, okay. So that is explained now and how it's all aligned towards target. The final thing I did want to mention to you all is the C plus S. Now, what, what do I really mean by that? Now, the S, of course, stands for spreads, okay? Now, the other thing that I did want to mention is not only should you add the spreads to your orders, you should also add a cushion, is what we call a cushion, okay? Or we call it leeway, all right? Some space for a bit of noise to come in, all right? So, for example, if I want to put a buy stop order, if I want to put a buy stop order, even to just to even to enter as well into a trade, okay? So buy stop into entry or buy stop as a stop loss, I usually, we usually give um, two pips, two pips leeway, which is two pips cushion, and on top we add a two pip spread. Sometimes on end of day strategies, if you're entering into really, really strong resistance and support levels, you can just use one pip cushion and a one pip spread, depending on whatever that your broker is offering for that particular currency in terms of spread, okay? So do remember that finally, when you get your final entry figure, your final stop loss figure, this is very, very important. Your cushion plus your spreads. And it's so important in terms of stop loss because sometimes a trade can come, and I've seen this before as we traded, is that the price can come so near to your stop loss and then it can reverse. And if you don't include the spreads and if you don't put any cushions in, you know what will happen traders, it will just stop you out and then just go all the way down and hit your target or you know it stops your stop loss and goes all the way up, hits your target on the other side. So do remember all of that, very critical stuff, do remember the three points when you are accounting for spreads and looking to understand what really all these spreads is all about. Very critical to your final uh, balance uh, sheet, your net profit and loss in your trade journal and for a positive equity curve. All right, so that's all from me in this video. And as we always say, till the next time, stay disciplined, 
follow your trading plan and keep trading like a master.